Holy shit. That's bonkers. Batman. That's bonkers. This is one of the best ones we've had all fucking year. This, mm -hmm. this thing is crazy. Thought That's... this might happen. <laughs> <laughs> I've been done a fan. That's fine. All right, wine tasting. Blind, six. Good, not good. How much, how expensive. Sometimes always, great friends. 10% off, discount code below. Discord channel, join the community. Please like and subscribe, it helps. Let's taste. Colored little number here, I like it. Mm, and we're going old school straight away, like off the, off the nose. It's, it's one of these things, it's just like Italy. It smells like Italian wine. I wonder how I managed to achieve that. It's really quite fascinating. That sounds, that smells uh, like musky, like cell, like it smells like a cellar. Uh, I don't know if you spent any time underground in a good wine storage space, but you do get this sort of like dusty, musky sort of smell going on to it. And that's got it in absolute bucket loads. Yeah, cool wine. Really sinewy tannins, um, as weird as that kind of sounds. It feels like sinew. What a beautiful wine. Again, dance power. The the coolest thing about this one is actually the, the tannin. It could kind of be anything. It's not it's a particular not particularly descript wine. I would describe it as delicious. I think it's southern Italian, like an Alianico or something like that. It's a really wonderful sort of phenolic bitterness that really sort of astringency that really drives the palate forward. And amazing uh, acid line on this. A very lively little bottle. I'm even salivating. Salivating just thinking about it. I don't think it's gonna be super expensive because it doesn't feel like there's a lot of it it's not super like the oak isn't super well integrated, I believe, is one way of phrasing it. So it doesn't taste like it's been in some really expensive barrels for a long time, which is typically in my experience where that high price point comes on these sorts of wines. So I'll have it at 40 bucks and I'll just take the one bottle of it. Uh, it's not my style of wine, it's not abhorrent. Wine number two, getting into that skin contacty orange thing that we are so often presented with on this show. Really lovely color to it, it's beautiful and golden. There is a bit of um, gym sock here. Uh, it's a bit reductive, but can't really sting it. It's accepted in the style. Mm -mm -mm. It's like a mandarin jam, like a marmalade. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it's, it, it doesn't ruin it by any means. Um, it is probably a slightly more, it's like an intermediate orange wine in terms of if you're just getting into the stuff, this might not be the best example of the whole world that you're gonna get into when you're tasting it because it does have that little bit of a uh, unrefined finish is how I like to think about mousiness. A little lively, bright citrus palette here. Um, orange peel, oh, it's mousy. It's not terribly mousy, but it's definitely mousy. This is A grade. What a remarkable example. Again, more salivating. Amazing, uh, very intricate array of acidity as well. And all of those kind of bright citrus flavors and that kind of black tea bergamot thing. And that nice stone fruit kind of just falls away really quickly. And then that reductive mousy thing dominates afterwards, which is a shame. If that wasn't there, it'd be an epic little wine. Or if it was in balance, it would still be a great wine. But unfortunately it's just, it's, that's wine for you. And that's, that's orange wine for you. You just got to accept this kind of stuff. Another deeper rich red number, but a little bit more purpley rather than like bricky. So on that like lighter end of red or ruby. It smells like cloves. It smells like, you know, uh, if you ever done that thing in Christmas, we get like the, an orange and you stick fucking cloves. I don't even know. Oh, I had to do that as a kid. I still don't know why they forced me to do that. It took me a whole day to cover an entire thing in cloves. I don't know. Is, were people just really stinky back in Christmas and they had to hang these things around? I don't know. It smells better than it tastes, doesn't taste bad, just doesn't really do heaps with that um, really promising nose of like all these different bunch of flowers because that smells like straight, yeah, like violets, a uh, nice spring day sort of thing. I think it was a great little Aussie Syrah or Shiraz because that's the freshness in the fruit here is fantastic. I'm not sure whether it's just meal. It's like a cherry ripe thing going on here. It makes me feel like it's like a, uh, I, I'm back in Italy again, but not not the, the typical places. I'm thinking like Montepulciano. Yeah, three bottles is all I want of it. It's three leaning towards one rather than leaning towards six. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with it. Um, it's kind of tight, like it's kind of wound up. Like, again, it's just a little bit unbalanced, a little bit oak dominant for me personally, but I think that a lot of people will really like this style. White wine uh, looks like it's naturally settled or has seen a very, very light filtration. Oh, interesting. Wow, we haven't seen a wine like this in a little while. This has diacetyl, so as a stressed malolactic fermentation, uh, that, that secondary, it's technically a conversion, technically not a fermentation, but it produces this molecule called diacetyl. <laughs> yeah, and it smells literally like a stick of butter. It smells kind of like the ocean, like you've got that sort of acidity from the white wine, but then you're down by the beach, uh, very much so like a bistro 
sort of smelling white wine. A little bit of oak to it potentially, but we'll find out more on the palate. I'm terrible at identifying the oak on the nose. The acid on this is searing. It is searing. And I'm gonna say that they tried to put it through Malo um, to try to drop that acidity down, convert those malic acids to lactic acid. And either it didn't work or it worked too well and they had to back out. This is more so if I wanted to share a bottle of wine with my mum and her friends while we play Canasta, which is a card game that's wonderful for old women because it keeps the brain ticking. Um, and also great for young men because like I smash mum and Canasta all the time and you can quote me on that. Uh, I'll have six of them because it's useful to have six bottles of those wines sitting around because if you aren't doing super well on Canasta, just load the old birds up on wine and then all of a sudden they lose all their skills. Six bottles. Also, don't try and get your parents drunk. Or do, anyway. Um, all right, we've got a lovely, lighter colored red wine. Ooh. Sometimes, so I don't reckon we should tr like taste wines anymore. I reckon we should just go and smell them and just be done with it. Because sometimes when you smell a wine, you just know that it's absolutely like bonkers crazy. And just smelling that is, yeah, done. I I'm already gonna buy 12. It's uh, Pinot of the high, uh, very high order. It has um, been handled meticulously well, and you can just tell sometimes from the smell. It kind of smells like what I imagine burlesque performers smell like in terms of their perfume before they get hell sweaty doing whatever they do. Like, it's got this really sort of uh, floral and fun and bright aroma to it. This is a very good Pinot. Like, we had the Morak last week, which was kind of at that this level, but a little bit, that was more whole bunchy. This is definitely less whole bunch. I can't actually pick up any whole bunch. Wow, that's light. That's really light. There's not much going on there at all. Wow. Fuck me, sideways. That is cracking. Yeah, yeah, Noah's, Noah's already is like, what the fuck? Yeah, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 100 and ten dollars a bottle and twelve please you only need to buy this wine uh, enough said uh, I think it'll actually be more interesting seeing this in a discussion with all three of us because holy shit Batman that's it that's it you get in an instant in an instant all right number six all right cool fuck it's meaty bit stemmy bit closed really bright cherry like really bright color really awesome color hmm, that's interesting much more of a nose on it than any of the uh, other reds, and it's a bit like... I haven't spent a lot of time... Like, when you're driving in the outback in Australia, you'll quite often see, like, sheep carcasses, and it's past the point where it smells like rotting meat, because there's no meat left to rot, but I think in my childhood I smelt a couple of those skulls of, like, rams that you find out in the middle of nowhere because they've run out of water, and it's a little bit similar. It's good tannin, good acidity, great fresh red cherries, uh, but yeah, the just reduction has kind of taken away from this. Three bottles, I reckon it's probably gonna be like 80 bucks. I reckon it's pretty spenny stuff. Gorgeous, lively, uh, acid crunchy, like green apple acidity. Um, which is really cool. It's actually really fun. Whereas you get like white wines that have this prickly acidity or like orange wines with that sort of like earthy, uh, citrusy thing that sits on the front of your tongue. Whereas this really just sort of sits in the middle of your mouth and goes, hey man, what's going on? And the answer is, I don't fucking know. What's going on with this? We've gone from dizzying highs to very moderate lows. But overall, really cool little tasting. A lot of styles of wine that I really like in good qualities and average qualities in fantastic qualities in like overall really good lineup I, i'm really excited to see what the boys think it's mm. it happens all the fucking time mm. and i don't think anyone should be surprised by it anymore i'm not the guy's evil yeah power fucking hungry you slug mm. welcome, right. back, to the welcome like, back to wine for the people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to guess how we vote um. <laughs> uh what do you guys think of this lineup I, I, not like last week where there was like a lot of bangers and a lot of like the, in that sort of drinkability mm. space. A lot of interesting wines here. Like every single wine was a big shift into the interesting zone. There was one wine in particular that uh, it took me less than a fraction of a second on smelling it that it was just like, I'm sold. Yeah, we, we get a lot, like when I don't buy many bottles, it's for a multiple of reasons. It's either because the wines are too good and I don't get it, possibly. Like me getting in a supercar that I've never driven before and crashing on the first corner because I'm like, oh, it's the fucking cars. <laughs> I don't know anything about these paddle shifts. Yeah, no. Um, and this one, again, I haven't bought heaps of it, and I think that's probably more to do with me than some of the wines, but at the same time, some pretty cool things in there. Uh, first wine. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was a perfect little pub red blend that mm. I want to drink in front of a fireplace, 
and watch the football. But yeah, I, th I thought it was just a classic little Cote d'Aroni blend or some kind of blend in that kind of area. Uh, I want it to be 30 odd bucks. I'd buy half a dozen because I have that mean mood for like a medium body red watching the football quite regularly. What do you go? Uh, yeah, I just want them for one model, then I'll hop onto the pale ales. But 40 bucks. I respect that. I respect that. Uh, Locky? Oh, Whoa! Wow. Yeah. Holy shit, this is pub That is pub pub mine. Mine. really good. That is pub That mine. is fantastic. That's one of the this is Spanish. One of the cheapest ones that we've had on the show lately. That is, um, that's a banging red. That is a that's banging really cool. red. That's really cool. Tempranillo Syrah. Syrah. Again. Again. Cool it is Shiraz, a thing, baby. isn't it? We've had a couple of Tempranillo Syrahs <laughs> yeah. of late. That's cool. For 17 bucks. That's, that's really cool. We that's, actually, that's a lot of fun. We had, um, uh, we had someone in the Discord chat this week talking about, uh, this is going to date it a little bit, BKVN or BV. Yeah. Oh NK. yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, I think he was over in the UK and he's trying to spend like not very much money on wine. He's trying to get into it. For a yeah, this fucking, is crazy. yeah, seventeen dollars. So that'd be what, yeah. like twelve pounds or something like that. I would buy that just to experience the tannin profile of this. It's a very unique and very fine tannin profile. It's, I love it. I've always wanted to start a wine brand where the name of each wine was just a day of the week. Mm. Uh, and like this is definitely Wednesday. Oh, this I was thinking like, Wednesday. <laughs> literally in my head, I'm like, that's a Wednesday. Definitely, that's a Wednesday. A, Wednesday a bottle of Wednesday, sure. please. I've been a little yeah. bit defeated. <laughs> a little bit defeated this week already. Awesome. I need to rekindle my passion. Yeah, no. Best 17 bucks, bucks you might spend yeah, on a wine yeah. this year. That's yeah. cool. Number two, uh, a wine that had mm. every single indication that I was going to fucking love it until it went mousy. Yeah, there was that little... It, it's not the mousiest thing that we've had on the show. No, it's I, not. I went third, and when I smelt it, I was just like, amber light. Just like a slight warning on this one. There's an iceberg over there. I know caution. we're on a cruise ship, but like, Absol it should be fine. Absolute caution. Um, yeah, and it didn't fuck it, but it also wasn't perfect. So here's... I've just tasted that again. Mm. Okay. And I tasted it in, in the tasting. I couldn't pick up any mousiness. Now, I'm usually stupidly sensitive to mousiness. Yeah, it is picking up. I still can't taste that. For maybe... Maybe COVID is the cure for mousiness. <laughs> hey guys, silver lining. silver lining out there. Go look silver the lining for, for getting COVID wine is, I can't right. actually, I can't. It's, yeah, it's no, like your power I, tr I, tr <laughs> I trust you guys, but I can't see it at all. And usually I'm like, on yeah, it. usually you're straight on it. You had 50, I had 60. I had 35. Yep. 49. 49. Okay. Yeah. You really, why don't you just go to 50? Italian? You reckon? Italian? Monticello? Why did I drink the rest of that? Well? I don't know, man. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, so that is Il Roccolo di Monticello. Garganega and Trebbiano di Suave. Di oh, Suave. Right. Cool. Between Verona and Suave grow dry grown 60s and 70s Garganega and Trebbiano vines. That's not in English, so I... To... I mean, it's a cool yeah. wine. Shame about the mousiness. All right, yeah. It might be bottle variation. It could be a bunch of different things. It's 11% alcohol, so it might be that like weird pH range. Get yourself but... some COVID, then get yourself a bottle of that. I agree. Mm. That's so funny. That's really funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, because you've sure, always yeah. been a big mousy person. Power. That's fucking oh, mousy. I'm, I'm, I'm a big mousy person. <laughs> yeah, no, big on it. Yeah, yeah, usually. Can't see it at all. Can't taste it at all, folks. Can't taste mousiness wow. after COVID. Wild. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cherish this moment and buy as much natural wine as possible. Yeah. Predominantly Lucy Margot. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> Great shout. Again, why am I agreeing with that? Who fucks oh, Lucy Margot? Anyway, uh, one of three. Who is she? Number three. Uh, cool. Oh, sorry, which one was that? This yeah, is, I, I liked this. this. I liked this. This was my pub. This was yeah. my, this was my, I'm like, 32 bucks, six bottles. i um, happy to, it, it was just a little bit sort of, the raciness was a bit much for me. Yeah. This is what a pub red looks like. Yeah. This is what you want what a pub, pub red yeah. looks like. Yeah. 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 Kids, I'm not sure if you ever did this. You got an orange and you had to put cloves into the orange. It's like a Christmas time. Thing. I had a Game Boy. I a, yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when you grow up in the country. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's definitely putting cloves into Christmas ham kind of vibe. Yeah, no, it's cool. Um, <laughs> we couldn't afford the ham, so I just used oranges. <laughs> <laughs> 35 bucks and six. 25 for three. Yeah, middle of the road. Middle of the road. Oh, All right, cool. 39. Fine. All right, what have we got? Oh, it's another Frederick Stevenson number. Freddie Stevenson. Is this Mont Montepulciano? Uh, Montepulciano from really? the Eden Valley. Oh, cool. Very cool. Obviously explaining the high acidity, Montepulciano raises it anywhere, but also Eden Valley. Yeah. Um, so he's, yeah, he's literally just like done this whole thing and he's just done a whole little sticker on, on top there like that. Yeah, yeah cool. very cool. Sorry, sorry, Steve, if you're watching, I'm just destroying your little wine. Yeah, very good. Cool. I really like it and I love all your wines and you yeah. um, and this is a great little like medium bodied swaffer. Yeah, very mm. nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you get that as a pub red, well done. Yeah, hell yeah, I want to go to that pub. Yeah, it's a nice pub. Yeah. <laughs> this next wine. On the lights. Yeah, this next wine has something funny going on here. Oh, what did, you, what did yeah. you think was going on here? I, I know exactly what's going on. We just don't 
I encounter it very often. And I'm okay. not sure if you might have encountered it before. It's really interesting. Tell it's, us exactly it's, what's going on. Stressed malolactic fermentation. That's what I was thinking as well. Oh. Diacetyl. <laughs> so diacetyl smells Ooh. like like actual like fresh butter. Not like butter is in oak. Butter as in like confected butter. Because it's, it's, a, it's a technicality and faults are within the eye of the beholder. So like if you love it, you love it. For me, we just get hammered into our heads. It's like when you see this, this bad. is bad. French cut really sort of thing. Like you might get your four runs, but it's not how you meant to get the runs. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's the it's the classic like when you make a hundred, but it's a shit shot and you get it anyway. You're like, yeah, thanks. Doesn't matter. Put it up on the board. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're all on the same page with Chardonnay, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, 30 bucks, six. Uh, I said six at 45. Uh, and I said 15 bucks and three. Okay. Oh, yeah. Holy yeah, rough. What 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 is going on here? I have I don't know this label. I can't say. Oh, this is Burgundy. Here so this is uh, Natty Burgundy. Uh, it's Aligote. Looks like the sort of. It is, uh, it is the least Aligote tasting Aligote. AMI like, like the Austrian Music no, Industry this looks, this, Awards or something. This like, looks like a uh, uh, like one of the uh, when you put a VHS tape that's in. That's exactly right. Yeah, and it's a. Mm. Whatever AMC or whatever it's it's I don't know VHS VHS. Hero <laughs> <laughs> Days do look like that. Um, I remember we actually uh, had a, a Chablis from this producer at Lock after one of these tastings like, like months ago. Totally yeah, uh, and Henry hated it. You and I both loved it because yeah. it was reductive as fuck. And oh, it was I good Chablis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something we should spend the money on though is the next wine. Holy shit. That's bonkers. Batman. That's bonkers. This is one of the best ones we've had all fucking year. This, mm -hmm. this thing is crazy. Thought That's... this might happen. <laughs> <laughs> I You're not a fan? That's fine. <laughs> oh, mate. This is like, I didn't even like taste it. It was, I was just a smell and I was like hot. Yeah, easily. It smells like really good peanut. Sick in New Zealand or like super cool climate Australia, like um, Tassie or um, Macedon Ranges or something like that. It has to be, it has to be a place where it snows. Like it needs to be that fucking cold, but it is absolutely stunning. One of the best wines we've had all year. I went straight up to like 110 and 12. I went 60 for 12. Yeah. I went 40 for six. I didn't, I liked it, yeah, don't get me wrong, but like I'm not as impressed I'm as you guys. all about this wine. This yeah. is Love bonkers it. good. What's it yeah. cost? Whoa, we've been fucking treated here. <laughs> what do we got? Oh, this is got? fucking cool. I've had this before. Bangenberg. No, this is American Pinot. Oh, cool. Some California. Little Rye. Anderson Valley. Le Lam. This is bonkers from Bone and Beyond, uh, the importer into Australia. This is, with that, also, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, first American wine um, I, on the show? I can't recall having A 100% first wine. American wine on the show. This is worth every fucking penny. And this is what I said for a while. Like, I haven't encountered a ton of American wines, kind of a fair few. Mm. Um, and when it comes to spending money on wine, uh, like actually as in making wine, you can't really outdo the Americans. They kind of like go up against the French pretty hardcore. And when it, you know, 30% of our whole channel is actually from America who, watch, who watches us. Mm. Chime in, how much would this wine cost you guys to acquire? And also, yeah. Another really interesting, can you can you actually acquire this wine? Because quite often you find that these wines are just available in allocation. Um, um, yeah, honestly, this wine is fucking exceptional. You want to, you want to pour a bit more in that glass? Yeah, there? I think we will. Uh, I, it was, this is one of those ones where I asked Lockie to pour me a half glass as soon as I finished up my tasting. We are going to be able to get the most clickbaity title out of this as well. I'm so excited. Greatest American wine we've had on the show. The Yanks come in over the top. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. Like, this is amazing wine. Speaking of not amazing wine. Yeah, yeah, this was pretty um, reductive. It yeah, was pretty I've, pongy, I yeah. had three. But, was, you, but, but see, you've kind of jumped the, the price on it though. That's I can good. see how quality this is. This yeah. is a quality wine that has been affected by reduction too much. Like, it wasn't bad enough for me to be like, this sucks! I was just like, give a fuck. Like, honestly, I do not care about this wine. I don't care if my mum made it, like, even if it was, like... <laughs> Mum, you're a lovely lady, but if that's you, like, man, you fucked up. Like, man. Do better, Mum. Yeah, do better, honestly. <laughs> I had 40 bucks and nine. 80 bucks and three. One for 35. Ooh, I mean, it's good value. It's, I, it's 30 bucks. It's a well-crafted wine at the price. I thought maybe Syrah, like, Yule Syrah. Just like something a little bit reductive. 12. No. Sven Joschke. No. Is that Syrah? Is that, that's, that's his Sangiovese. San what the no, fuck? That's a big, no way. That's, that's a big departure from, from previous years. This guy made in 2020 my favorite wine of the year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what? hands down, and that and that's this wine. This wine. This is not looking. Uh, it's a vintage variation thing, man. It sucks. I, I honestly think it's a bottle variation. Because I tried this wine like six months ago, and I thought it was fucking amazing. Um, Reduction. So, 
sharpening up. Could be a bit of bottle variation. It's a real shame. Uh, one of the nicest guys in wine, legitimately, but also one of the most up and coming talented winemakers as well. That, that really oh, no. that makes me really sad. I, I continually champion this wine. I think it's. I, I, I love this fucking wine. And his Chardonnay is fantastic as yeah, well. Yeah, Grenache too. Like everything he does is so good. Pitnet. Pitnet. Mm. I've tasted it. It's very good. Oh. Um, That's all well and good. That wine sucks. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to him, Sven. I love that. Yeah, Sven, I'm sure uh, you're a good bloke. Like, let's play cards, but don't don't bring that. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure what's going on here. Unfortunately, um... <laughs> sure. I said, I'm happy with it. the nine bottles that I've got, Sven. Love you. Uh, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately, a little bit stinky. I mean, today. I thought it was worth 30 bucks. So, take the, take that as what you will. I'll always champion this wine, no matter what. Because I think it's one of the best things you can try for 30 bucks. Of, like, Australian. I reckon for 30 bucks, you'd be better off trying, like, six different public transport methods around Adelaide. Like, that'd be a better way to spend your 30 bucks. Well, I'm sorry, but, like, sometimes we have to be mean. Like, we can't always be positive <laughs> on the show. You guys can do that. I'm taking a new look. I'm going on Black Hat Henry Cowboy from now on. If I don't like the wine, I'm going to say it. That sucks. Each their own, man. Yeah, each their own. <laughs> uh... Span, I hope I don't run into you in a dark alley. You could probably beat the shit out of me. Terrible wine, though. Nah, he wouldn't no, do no, it. No, no, he, he wouldn't, wouldn't do it, but he's too nice. Thanks for joining us, guys. It's wine, pleasant. Wine of the week. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be by the sounds. Be. Yeah, I haven't got any strong opinions otherwise. If you want to spend one hundred and forty-five dollars on a bottle of wine and not regret it, that's a good way to do fucking it. Fucking do it. Yeah, yeah that's your Christmas sorted. Don't invite Henry to the party. Don't though. invite Henry to the It'll party. I'll hang out and drink my seventeen-dollar reds in front of a fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you just be screaming at the whatever sporting game is on with yeah. a glass full of that. Just like go team. Fuck, I love Vietnamese badminton. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> until next week. Be here. Sorry, Scott. I do what I want, what I want.